The movie is set in the future, where the world is overwhelmed by overpopulation. The only solution for all the countries is to cut their population by 5% annually. To counter their overpopulation problem, the United States executes a program called The Thinning. In this program, all the students are required to take a standardized test every year. Whoever fails the test will be executed. However, we learn that the thinning scoring system has been infiltrated by some elite and powerful people. The officials pass whoever they want, usually the children of those powerful people. Risking her life, a student named Leanna Michaels exposes the corrupted system. Meanwhile, Blake Redding, the son of Texas Governor Dean Redding, and some other students fail the test. In the public's eye, the students are thought to have been killed as soon as the results came out. However, unbeknownst to them, Blake and the others are sent to an underground slave facility to manufacture electronics like phones for a company called Asuru Global. We learn that the company gets its profits from cheap labor. Once inside the facility, they're shown a video where a woman explains to them that they got a second chance at life. The place is known as Incubator, designed by Asuru Global, and the ones who are most productive will have a chance to get reintroduced to society. We see that a teaching device has been inserted in all of their necks, while an automated voice teaches them how to do tasks. The routine is the students have to work 14 hours a day with one hour of dining and personal time. They also have curfews, during which the students have to return to their assigned units and rest. While watching the videos on screen, Blake notices his long-lost girlfriend, Elle. Soon after, he goes looking for her and finds her. The couple plan to meet later during curfew. Next, Blake and Elle meet and rekindle their relationship. They also get intimate with each other. Later that night, Blake and his friend Heather are chatting when suddenly a siren rings, alerting the whole facility. We learn that a student is attempting to commit suicide. He readies himself to jump off the top of the facility. Meanwhile, a group of boys casually encourages the student to jump off. The leader of the group is Cage. Without giving it a second thought, the student jumps off. However, the guards are quick enough to throw a net and save him. Later, we learn that the students who attempt suicide or refuse to work are sent to a restricted room where they are injected with some kind of drug in order to incapacitate them. The next day, Cage visits Blake in his unit and tells him to stay away from Elle. She is now Cage's girlfriend. Later in the cafeteria, Ellie sits alone when she's interrupted by Cage. He greets and kisses her, but Ellie seems uncomfortable around him. Blake, not far from their table, furiously watches them. Cage and his team take off to do their duty. They're called the Worthy since they've been handpicked by the incubator to supervise other workers. When Cage leaves, Blake approaches Ellie and tries to talk with her. Fearing for his safety, she advises him not to talk with her in public. Just then, Cage's men spot Blake and ask him to go away. The latter gets mad and ensues a fight with others. Soon, Cage himself arrives and overpowers Blake. Later, Blake attempts to run away with Ellie, but they're caught by Mason King, the ex-supervisor of the thinning standardized test. He's been recently relocated to the incubator as the facility in charge. The guards take Ellie away while Blake's leg is twisted and broken by Mason. Meanwhile, in Texas, the townspeople are attending Blake's funeral as they believe he's dead after his failed test. There are also reporters who try to interview Blake's father, Governor Dean, regarding his run for the presidential elections. We also see Lina on the premises, who's been popular among the reporters after she successfully exposed the corrupt thinning test. In the next scene, we learn that the exposed foul scoring system harmed Dean's reputation. However, he and his PR team managed to put the blame on Mason King. Realizing that Mason isn't the only one to blame, an FBI named Agent Joanne Morris is investigating the incident. One day, Agent Joanne visits Lena at her home and tries to get information from her. However, Lena refuses to disclose anything. After the agent leaves, she hears a knock at the door. It's Jack, an Asuru global security guard, who has come to give her an invitation from the Governor Dean. 
Next, Lena goes to visit Dean at his premises. The governor attempts to get her support for his presidential campaign to mitigate his own controversy surrounding the thinning test system. She strictly declines and leaves the premises. On her way back, Lena is greeted by Georgina, Asuru Global's CEO. We learn that Asuru Global helps the governor financially in his election campaigns. Hence, Dean and Georgina work closely together. The CEO Georgina suggests Lina help the governor in exchange for smuggling her siblings out of the country. The CEO adds that her siblings don't have to go through the test if Lena agrees to work for the governor. However, she still refuses. In the next scene, Jack drives Lena and her siblings back, but he goes further than their home. Lena realizes this and worriedly asks him. Just then, Jack releases a gas in the car, making all the passengers unconscious. Lina later wakes up in an abandoned construction site, where Jack and some other people are standing in front of her. Among them is Ms. Cole, her sibling's school teacher. Jack reveals that he and Ms. Cole, along with others, work for an organization called The Fight, which is against the thinning system. If Dean becomes the next president, the thinning system will never come to an end so they need Lena's help. They want her to accept the governor's offer in order to earn his trust and get close to him, with hopes that this will help them end the thinning for good. Lena agrees to help. Meanwhile, her best friend Kellen gets an internship at a TV news company. That day, he's doing research on the process of the thinning program. He discovers that no one handles the dead bodies after the execution. Later that night, Kellen goes to Lena's house and tells her about his research findings. The two curious friends go to the cemetery and begin to dig Blake's grave. Shockingly, they find the coffin empty. The scene cuts to eight months later, two weeks before election day. Lena continues her support for the governor's campaign. In between, she also continues to provide information to Jack and Ms. Cole. However, she's fed up promoting the governor's campaign and confronts them at their meeting place, the construction site. Lina is furious that they're sitting back and doing nothing. Ms. Cole calms her down and makes her realize that all the information they need is in the Asuru Global CEO Georgina's computer. Lina is then handed a hard drive to retrieve that information. But she's worried about how she can do the task without being caught. Meanwhile, in Asuru Global's shady facility, Blake and the others have been working for the past eight months. We see that his leg hasn't healed yet and he limps as he walks. Blake also hasn't been able to make contact with Ellie. Later that night, Cage and his boys sneak into Blake's living unit. They gag him and Cage repeatedly hits Blake on his injured leg while he whimpers in pain. The next day, Blake lies to the facility doctor about the incident while getting checked. Later, he tells Heather to inform Ellie to be in Cage's boxing match. Meanwhile, Kellen manages to crack the secret of the labor camps, saying Asuru Global doesn't have a manufacturing area on their campus, and they've been bringing in military rations from a company called TX Pack, enough for 100,000 people per year. He then reports his findings to his boss, but she doesn't believe him. She wants evidence. Later, when he gets into his car, a masked man tries to suffocate him with a bag. Thankfully, Kellen manages to trigger the car alarm and scare the man away. He then rushes to Lina's home to tell her about the incident. Realizing that someone from Asuru is always listening to their conversation, Kellen explains his findings and the recent threat to Lina by writing in a notebook. Lina believes his story. She then calls FBI agent Joanne Morris and tells her about Kellen's theory. The next scene cuts to the election day. Lina leaves her siblings at Ms. Cole's and heads to the governor's premises, where Dean and his supporters are patiently waiting for the results. She arrives at the building and greets Jack. Meanwhile, back at the incubator, Cage is showcasing his boxing skills and defeating every one of his opponents. While the crowd cheers for him, Blake arrives at the scene and volunteers to duel with Cage. The crowd goes silent and Blake tells Cage that he wants to be the leader of his group if he wins. The latter accepts the challenge. An intense fight between the two ensues, and even though Blake's leg is injured, he overpowers Cage and wins the match. 
After his win, Blake gathers Cage's men and tells them that none of the students from the thinning program are killed. They are brought down here for cheap labor. He also reveals that the promise to reintroduce them to society is a lie, and that they are stuck in the facility forever. Blake manages to convince them, and they decide to fight against the system. Meanwhile, Lina excuses herself to the bathroom and escapes from the window. She somehow manages to get inside the CEO Georgina's office and retrieve the needed information. In the computer, there are secret incubators video footage that shows Blake and the others. Lina is delighted to see her friends alive. She quickly transfers all the information to the hard drive. At the same time, Georgina is just about to enter the office, but Jack manages to stall her, saying that the governor is expecting her. While Lina escapes, Jack is eventually caught in the lies and taken by security forces. Lina then calls FBI agent Morris. Back at the facility, Blake and Ellie remove their GPS trackers, ready to escape. Meanwhile, Cage and his friend ensue a fight in the cafeteria, hoping to stall the guards. Soon after, other workers and guards join the fight, creating chaos. The facility in charge, Mason, joins in to intervene in the commotion. Meanwhile, Lina meets Agent Morris on the terrace and hands over the hard drive. However, it turns out Morris is also corrupt and involved in Asuru Global's dirty work. The agent then holds Lina at gunpoint. However, the latter somehow manages to subdue Morris for a few seconds before jumping down into an apartment with the hard drive. Next, she visits Kellen to copy the files of the incubator from her hard drive to his computer. Kellen leaves for the office and gets in his car, which explodes when he turns it on. Sadly, he is killed during the explosion. Fearing for her life, Lina takes the drive and leaves for home. It's revealed that Morris and her men, both working for Asuru, killed Kellen and were planning to kill Lina to tie up loose ends. Soon after, they surround Lina's apartment while she's inside. Morris camps behind a staircase outside, while her men go inside the apartment. Alerted about their presence, Lina sets up a trap. Seconds after the men enter inside and fall into the trap, the apartment blows up in flames, killing everyone. When Lina attempts to escape outside, she's attacked by Morris on the stairs. However, Lina kills the agent by stabbing her with a box-cutting knife, then shoving her down the flight of stairs. In the next scene, Lina makes it to the news channel her friend used to intern in, where she turns over the drive to Kellen's boss. Meanwhile, Blake and Ellie dress up as nurses and sneak into the basement, not knowing that Mason is following behind them. The pair climbs up a ladder and escapes outside in the middle of the Texas desert. They celebrate happily, just when Mason attacks them from behind. Luckily, the news channel's helicopters arrive at the scene and record the video of the incubator's opening with Blake and Ellie on it. When Mason tries to kill Blake, Ellie attacks him from behind and kills him. She and Blake then get to safety. In the meantime, the governor wins the election and becomes president, only to see a live broadcast of Incubator with Blake on it. He's both surprised and delighted to see his son alive. Turns out the governor wasn't aware of Asuru's dirty secrets. But since he's also overpowered by CEO Georgina, he cannot take any action at the moment. With full power and authority over the entire nation, Georgina arrests everyone who conspired against the thinning. Elsewhere in the Texas desert, Lina catches up with Blake and Ellie, but they discover that Georgina will end democracy and freedom in the nation. They are arrested and taken in a military vehicle. Thankfully, Jack arrives and saves the day, freeing his friends. He claims that he works for the FBI. Jack adds that they have to defeat Georgina's dictatorship and bring things back to normal.